Gyananjana-salakaya Chaksaurandilitam yena tasmai sri guruvenama Srila Gurudev has ordered me to discuss the next question and answer of Nimi Maharaj to the nine Yogendras. So far we've heard the answer first of Kavi and then Havir and then Antariksha. This is now will be answered by Prabuddha, who is the fourth of the nine Yogendras. Antariksha, when he was finishing his completion of the illusory energy, he said, now I've summed up the description of the illusory energy. What more do you want to hear? So Nimi Maharaj was very pleased, and he again asked, Please explain how even a foolish person, a foolish materialistic person, can transcend and cross over the illusory energy, which is very, very difficult to overcome, unless one is self-controlled. So now, Prabuddha, is replying. He agrees that it's very difficult to overcome for one who is not self-controlled. And he explains the workings and the illusion. He said, accepting the roles of male and female, human beings, in fact all living entities, engage in sex life, thinking that by this process, their misery will come to an end and they'll enjoy unlimited happiness. But actually, the opposite comes to pass. All their happiness disappears and their misery increases again and again and further and further. Then he talks about wealth. Everyone is working so hard for wealth. And Srila Gurudev often quotes this verse. Nityarta dena vitena, dola benat mamrityuna, grihaptaptasya pasubi, kapri tir sadais chalai. Wealth is the perpetual source of distress. In fact, it is virtual death for the soul. What satisfaction can one acquire? by his attainment of his hard-earned wealth. <coughs> Similarly, how can one gain any permanent happiness by his home, his family, or his uh, household animals, which are maintained by this hard-earned wealth? There's no happiness there. <coughs> then he continues to explain that anywhere in the material world, there's no happiness. One cannot find happiness even on the heavenly planets where the demigods reside. Even in heaven, the living entity is subject to rivalry of other demigods and those who are superior to him. There's still envy, and envy is a cause of great pain. Since the residence even the he in the heavenly planets is exhausted, after some time, his pious activities, as Gurudev said, everyone is enjoying and suffering the results of their pious activities and impious activities, sometimes going to heaven, and when those pious activities are used up, then they go to hell. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a very nice analogy in his teachings to Srila Sanatana Goswami. In the... Um, in ancient India, there was a way of punishment for the culprits. They would be taken to the middle of the river on a boat, and then they would be dumped under the water. And just before they would die, they would be picked up by their hair, and they would get one breath. Ah, oh, please don't put me under that water again. I promise I won't do anything bad. And just as soon as they get their breath, again under the water, up and down. So sometimes the living entity is in the heavenly planets, and sometimes 
just like a Ferris wheel, he's sometimes in the hellish planets. These demigods resemble kings who, although they're worshipped by those citizens who think that the king is living in the lap of luxury and is very happy, those kings are always oppressed by rival kings who are envious of them. And they're always uh, trying to control and trying against the will of destiny, of their own destiny, to maintain power, to maintain prestige. So even those in the most powerful positions are always suffering and afraid of losing their positions, always envious of others, always angry, always conniving and manipulating, and in this way they feel all kinds of pain. So what is the way out? These are the foolish people. And the question by Nimi Maharaj is how can even the foolish materialist cross over the insurmountable illusory energy which is not possible to be free from for one who is not self-controlled. So here, Prabuddha, Sage Prabuddha, is first explaining the various kinds of persons who are not self-controlled, and now he's giving the way out. And you'll all recognize this very, very popular and very important verse coming up. Tasmad gurum prabhadye tat jigyasu sreya utamam shabde pare chanisnatyam brahmani upasamashrayam. Therefore, considering the very miserable condition in all species of life and the waste of time in trying to be happy, and the more we make arrangements to be happy, the more miserable we become. Therefore, a person who seriously desires happiness, not there's two kinds of happiness, Shreyas and Preyas. One who wants Shreya Uttama, the highest real happiness. Our Srila Prabhupada gives an analogy of Preyas and Shreyas. Preyas means temporary false happiness, just like a baby. A baby will be crawling. And a baby, as many of you know, has no sense of discrimination. The baby in crawling will see an open safety pin and think, oh yes, this is for my eating, it's so shiny. And then he'll put it in his mouth and become full of misery and pain and blood. Whereas an adult, he'll discriminate. This is for my eating and this is not for my eating. This will be bad for me and this will be good for me. I was once on a morning walk with our Srila Prabhupada in 1969 in Boston and there was a pigeon eating vomit in the street. So he said he has no discrimination and most everybody has no discrimination. A human being has to discriminate what they eat and what they don't. And similarly, one who wants real happiness has to discriminate what is good for me and what is not good for me. So what does he do to find out? One who seriously desires real happiness must seek out a bona fide spiritual master and inquire from him and accept initiation from him. The qualification for the bona fide guru is that he must have realized all the scriptures, not only knowing them, quoting so many verses one after another, or even explaining their meaning. But he has to have realized these verses, which he has done either by his natural identity from descending from the spiritual world as an associate of the Lord, or he became like that as a sudden siddha by having full faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his own spiritual master, who thus revealed to him all the Vedic literatures. So, one who has uh, become spiritual master by fully surrendering to his own guru, 
or one who has descended from the kingdom of God and is now acting as a spiritual master, acting in the majjama capacity of making distinctions between a person who is uh, qualified to receive instructions, a person who is to be neglected, in that way. He takes shelter of that bona fide spiritual master who has realized all the conclusions of scriptures and because of his realizations, he's fully detached. Brahmani upasamashrayam. He has no material desires and no material anxieties. And he knows all scriptures, he's detached, and he has full realization of the Supreme Lord. That is, minimum, he would be in, in order to be able to give that highest benefit, minimum, he would be engaged in at least having visions of the Lord as a person in Bhava Bhakti, as a Madhyam Uttam. And then, even that Madhyam Uttam would turn his disciple over to an Uttama Mahabhagwat once he knows such a person is present. And that person can actually give the highest prema bhakti. <laughs> so then, Prabhuda, Sage Prabhuda continues to explain how the disciple should act in relation to his self-realized spiritual master. Accepting his spiritual master as his life and soul and worshipable deity, as the verse quoted yesterday, the disciple who wants to be free from all fear and all sense of duality and freedom from seeing anything outside of its relationship with Krishna. He accepts the bona fide spiritual master as his worshipable deity and as his very life and is more intimate than his own soul. So he explains he should be very... Uh, clean and tolerant and engaged in the service of his spiritual master, studying the Vedas under the direction of the spiritual master. And in this way, uh, even a person who's in gross ignorance can be freed from the illusory energy by the influence of that spiritual master who is more intimate than his own soul. I'll end here, but I wanted to mention one thing one small thing that happened in Australia a few years ago. Srila Gurudev was giving lectures on this verse that was quoted yesterday by Amdhutiya Bhinivesita Syad, that one should see the spiritual master as more intimate than his own Atma. So the next morning I asked him, uh, you say that we should see the spiritual master as closer to us than our own soul, but I don't see that way. Whenever I see you, I'm always fearful and I feel guilty that I'm not serving you properly. So Gurudev said, yes, that's why I gave that class. So you should know that there's no separation any more than there is separation between fire and its heat. Just like there's no separation between Krishna and the gopis, and yet they're always feeling separation. Similarly, there's no real separation of the guru and the disciple. So when Gurudev walks in, the disciple who recognizes this doesn't see, oh, Gurudev is talking to that person and smiling at that person. Why isn't he talking and smiling and appreciating me? Rather, he thinks, oh, my heart has just come into the room. My soul has just come into the room. And now he's speaking with this person and that person. And thus, that disciple becomes happy, increasingly happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good, you explained very well. But yet, the purport of this slope, <coughs> this is question, how easily we can cross this Duratya Maya? And then he told him, everywhere in Srimad Bhagavatam and all Shastra, Tasmat Gurum Prapadit. So, Guru Nishtha is the backbone of bhakti. If no Guru Nishtha, anyone cannot have real bhakti. 
so bottle like bhakti we can have so must be high class of guru nishtha hmm? obey him even we can give up our life for guru service shila prabhupad bhakti siddhan saraswati ji to tell if for my guru seva i will go to hell for whole life and janm and janm hmm? krishna cannot do you he knows he does not know that you are suffering or what but in incarnation the guru he is associates knows but we don't recognize him hmm? even even his madhyam adhikari no hot try to please him don't do anything against him if he will criticize his associates himself then what will be you will go down don't criticize in any in any occasion <coughs> never and never if he is doing wrong even you are not his guardian eh? guardian authority guardian authority guru may do tell this in this way we should Mm. accept a guru and obey him and give your life to please him if he is not happy you should not do that if guru wants then even by giving life we should try to do this all living entity himself and in combined effort they want happiness but they never in a state of happiness only sorrow suffering problems coming hmm? that is why go to gurudev and be surrendered there hmm? and then be initiated properly and then learn the system of bhakti process of bhakti and then no oh, give up all attachment worldly attachment if you are doing bhakti giving so many classes high class of rasas raslila and others don't by the bhakti even they cannot save you only guru can save so we should give up all our attachment always hari katha in sadhu sang and what he told by second question that and brahmacharya very simple not giving any pen to any beings uh, and in all living entity seeing your worshipable deity krishna and those who are bhakti shastra you should have very um, nishtha honor them but don't criticize any shastra they are also anyhow far away <coughs> they are indirectly. telling same bhakti indirectly, indirectly. and you should keep control on your indri especially your tan tan is the heaven of evil of all evil roots <laughs> and sarvopari among all you should always hear the very powerful wonderful sweet pastimes of krishna and preach this to others and what you have give up to krishna this is the purport of that then he asks fifth question what is the swarup of narayan or supreme personality yeah, you do mel- australian melody
Male will sing with him and female with their party. Or oh, late in drama.
Swami Maharaj became satisfied and very happy. And then he asked, Please tell me, who is that Narayan or Bhagavan to whom we have to do bhakti? Who is he? What is Brahma Tattva like or supreme personality of Godhead, his Tattva? Please tell me. Malho Maharaj Vishwati. No? Then you... Why you cannot? Guru Vay Gora Chandra Radhika Tadali Krishna Krishna Bhakta Tadabhate Namo Namaha So first I offer pranams the Lord is free to Guru Dev on Vishnu Pad, Sishimad Bhaktivedanta Rayan Goswami Maharaj, Sanyasis Vaishnavis, Vaishnavas. So we are very fortunate to hear the beginning of the 11th canto. It's described these 12 cantos of Bhagavatam is Krishna's surup. So this, the 10th canto is Krishna's face. The five chapters dealing with Raslila is Krishna's smile. The 11th canto is the head, means the brain of Krishna, <clears throat> figuratively speaking. Because there, after giving instructions, how to this after fixing the goal in the tenth canto, eleventh canto gives the process of sudden bhakti. So already this is the fifth question asked by Maharaj Nimi to the Navayogendras, the sons of Bhagawan, Rishab Dev. So you think carefully what we've heard so far. What is Bhagavad Dharma? What is Bhakti Tattva? What is Maya Tattva? What is Bhakta Tattva? And now we're hearing what is Bhagavad Tattva. What is the Surup of Narayan? Therefore, <clears throat> Nimi Maharaj, he asked, please tell me if you think I am qualified to understand what is the Sarupa of the Supreme Lord, Sri Narayan. So, the Navi Ogendras, which one was it? Nipalaya Maharaj said, even though Bhagavan is present in the creation, maintenance and dissolution of the universe, still he has no cause himself even though he is the cause of all causes and all effect which we see in this world is nothing else but him, still he maintains a separate existence outside of everything. Just like in Chatur Shlok Bhagavatam. See, Narayan gave that inspiration to Brahma. Ahameva sagevagli nanyat sadasatparam tatpasyat taritacha yoviseto so asmiyaham. O Brahmaji, what you see before the creation there was only me what you see now, this creation is nothing else but me. And after this creation is dissolved, only I exist. Therefore, Bhagavatam gives the example like a spider. Isn't it? That spider web comes from no one else but him. But before the spider web, the spider was there. That spider web comes from the spider. And after the spider web is dissolved back into the spider, only the spider exists. Therefore, the Supreme Lord, he is both the cause and the effect of everything in creation, material and spiritual, but still, he maintains a separate creation, a separate existence outside of cause and effect. Therefore, it is he only which pervades everything. So this 11th canto is a very wonderful explanation of Advaita Gyan Tattva, how nothing is separate from Krishna. Just like in the waking state, the dream state, and the state of deep sleep, in this Everything else, the Supreme Lord enters all senses, and everything which is perceived is nothing else but an expansion of Him. For example, Nimi Maharaj was explaining this Gyan Indriya, by which we acquire knowledge. Who gives the power for those senses to work? Nothing else but the Paramatma Himself. These senses themselves are created by Bhagavan's and Mambayaranga Shakti, His Maya Shakti. Devil Bhagavan Himself is creating the senses. He's giving direct inspiration for the senses to work through perception. But he himself, is not, even though nothing else is being perceived except him, still he maintains separateness from everything. This is the Sarup of Bhagavan. In simple words, nothing is separate from him, but still he maintains a separate existence from everything. Therefore, but do 
not think because these senses come from Sri Narayan that he can be perceived by sense perception. This is not true. Just like it's not necessary. Just like a spark, when it goes back into the fire, is not better for the fire anyway. In the same way, even though sense perception comes from him, still, the sense of the living entity cannot in any way transform his sarup, nor can he be understood by direct sense perception. What to speak of Bhagawan not being able to be described or realized by the senses? Sri Goswami says, Atasi Krishnamadi Nabhava Graham Indriya Seven Mukha Hijiva Doswayam Eva Spuriti Adha. What to speak of the senses being able, unable to perceive him? In fact, even the Vedic literatures cannot completely describe him. Therefore, not even the authoritative language of the Vedas can perfectly describe the absolute truth. Because the Vedas themselves say that the Supreme Lord cannot be understood by words alone. Devon Vedanta Sutra, the last one, Sabda Anubhitat, Sabda Anubhita. The Supreme Lord is beyond all type of, he cannot be expressed by words. Therefore, finally the Shastra says he is Avachaniya. The Vedas say he cannot be under, he cannot be described by words because he is indescribable. Therefore, finally, the Vedas themselves says, Nayati. Nayati. He is not this, he is not that. How we can completely describe him. Therefore, even though the Vedas try to give reference to the Supreme Lord directly and indirectly, still they cannot achieve complete, su complete success. Therefore, there is only one absolute truth. Those three modes of nature by which everything appears to be different from him is nothing else but his external illusory potency. Thus, he is so unknowable that even the demigods cannot completely understand him. That supreme absolute truth is a source of all subtle and gross manifestations. But he is simultaneously transcendental to them because he is absolute. I mean, absolute means everything depends upon him for their existence, but Krishna does not depend upon anyone for his existence because he is called Swarat or self-manifest. Okay. Thank you. The purport is that what is the Swarup of Bhagavan? Who is the root cause of whole universe? Srishti, Sthiti and Pralaya. Also, you should know there are so many worshipful deities in India. In Vedic literature, Puran, it has been told. Like sometimes Brahma, Shankar, sometimes Ganesh, sometimes Surya, sometimes Sakti, sometimes Narayan, sometimes Dwarkadi, sometimes Brajesh Krishna. Though they are so different, different. What should we think? So he is telling that really who is Anadi Radhi Govinda Sarva Karan Karanam. He is the root cause of everything. Hmm? Brahma, Shankar, Indra and others, only they are bhakta. Adhikarik devata <coughs> for creation, to save creation like this. Narayan, uh, Nishinkadev, Varadev, Sri Ramchandra, non different of Krishna. Krishna is when ete chance kala punsa Krishnastu Bhagavan Indriyar ek lokam mridiyanti Krishna is supreme lords of lords. He comes in the form of sometimes Ramchandra, Nishingadev, Kalki, Baman, so many things. So, even Narayan is not, he is worshipable. Ram is worshipable. Nishing is worshipable. But, oh, Krishna comes in their forms. They are not 
their existence is not independent. They depend on Krishna. Also, Narayan cannot do Ras. Nishingha, if Ras is going, Nishingha will go, then all will <laughs> run away. <laughs> no Ras, nothing. Even Ramchandra cannot do. He is tightened in Valli Sita. So anyone cannot do this. Hmm? Anyone cannot take Pick up feather. Float. Float. Only Krishna. He can make ross. So Krishna is supreme head. Badanti tattva vidas tattvam jajjyanam advayam brambheti paramatmiti bhagavan shabjate. Only one Krishna is there, Bhagavan. His existence is there. His form is there. All qualities as they are. But when we will see by the knowledge, vision of knowledge, O Brahma. And when we see by yoga, then like Paramatma. And when we see by Bhakti, then with all attributes we see that Krishna is supreme head of all. Brahma is only the shadow or Infulgences. Infulgences of the nail uh, nails only. And Paramatma only like this in heart, like Antaryami. So you must know that Supreme Worshipful Deity Bhagavat Tattva is Krishna. Then he told, Oh, very good. I want to know that what is the purport of Vedas? So many rishis and maharshi, they became what? Confused. Confused. What Vedas are telling? In Ved it has been telling, Vedas are telling that do sacrifice. Take the meat of horses and all other things which are sacrificed. <coughs> and you should marry, grihastha life. And then you can take wine. What is the purpose? <laughs> Who will? Can you? Oh Prabhu, you are sleeping. Can you? <laughs> Shakti Maharaj, <laughs> then you or uh, what name? Radha Kant Prabhu? Where? Where? Can you? Bhagavat? Me. Uh, can? I can try. No try. If you will. <laughs> Om Gyanati Mirandasya Gyananjala Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Jaina Tasmaya Shri Guru Vena Maha Guru Vey Gaur Chandraya Radhikaya Taralaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Taravaktaya Namo Maha I first of all offer my thunderbat pranams unto my beloved Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa Paradaj Gacharja, Asadav Tarasar Shishimad, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and unto all the Chidandi Sanyasis and the Vaishnavas, voice of Lord Thunderbat Pranams. So the inquiry is being addressed to Avi Holtra Maharaj, responds to Nemi Maharaj's question about the um, purport of the Vedic literature. <coughs> there are many instructions throughout the Vedic literatures as to um, sakarm karma, nishkarm karma, etc. 
and vikama. Vikama also. But it's described how in if we do activities wanting some result, this is Sakam and the example is Dhruva Maharaj. So this is not the highest um, <laughs> practice for our devotion. If we perform some act of devotion, but we're wanting some remuneration for it, then this is called Sakam. But Nishkam Karma Yoga is described as not wanting any remuneration for my um, effort. But still this is not Shuddha Bhakti. Shuddha Bhakti is beyond Nishkam. In the um, stage of Nishkam Karma Yoga, the practitioner is thinking that this is my effort or this is my facility that I'm providing for the Lord. Whereas Shuddha Bhakti, he has the vision that's been previously described of seeing everything as the Lord's potency. So he's um, utilizing all the Lord's energy back again in the Lord's service. This is Shuddha Bhakti as compared to Nishkaram Karma Yoga. So these three types of yoga are discussed here. And um, it's saying here in this translation, childish and foolish people are attached to materialistic fruitive activities although the actual goal of life is to become free from such activities. Therefore, the Vedic injunctions indirectly lead one to the path of ultimate liberation by first prescribing fruitive religious activities. This is Sakam Karma Yoga. <clears throat> Just as a father promises his child candy so that the child will take his medicine. So the Vedic scriptures are designed for the conditioned soul to pull the conditioned soul to a spiritual transcendental state of consciousness. It's saying in the second canto, Bhagavan Brahma Karstena, Tir Abhikyas Yamanasya, Tad Avyaya Sakuteshto, Ratir Atman Yatobavet. That Lord Brahma, he studied the Vedic scriptures three times, scrutinizing them with his twelve heads. And the conclusion that he reached, four heads, sorry, so twelve times. <laughs> So 12 times he studied the Vedic scriptures. And the conclusion he reached was Ratir Atman Yatobavet. That attraction for Krishna is the ultimate goal of life. So the different regulations that were instructed through the Vedic scriptures bring us to the conclusion ultimately, as we just hear from Buddha Dhamadha Maharaj, coming to the 10th canto of the beautiful smiling face of the Lord. So, and developing attraction for this personal aspect of the Lord, rather than performing various Vedic injunctions just to simply um, have some remuneration in this world. So Srila Gurudev began his lecture tonight by describing if someone is running very fast, um, but is um, with eyes closed even and slipping, that this is actually indicating the path of Raganuga, not this path of following the Vedic injunctions explicitly, but following the Vedic injunctions with the vision of developing this attraction in the heart completely for Radha and Krishna. So this is the ultimate conclusion of the Shastra, to bring us to an attraction for Krishna. The next verse is saying, If an ignorant person who has not conquered the material senses does not adhere to the Vedic injunctions, certainly he will engage in sinful and irreligious activities. Thus his reward will be repeated birth and death. So for not following these instructions and injunctions, the um, system that the Lord has provided is Vanashram, the system where by our um, daily we can bring ourselves to focus completely on the Lord more and more through our activities, all of our activities to be focused on bringing pleasure to the Lord. And as we've heard constantly throughout this Navi Yogendra Sambhad, that without the potency of Guru, then none of this at all can actually manifest in the heart of the conditioned soul. The conditioned soul, there's a very beautiful example of 
um, firewood, that fire is always p um, present in wood. And just as that potential is present in the jiva, but can't be ignited until another piece of wood, so to speak, comes in contact with that jiva. Similarly, the spiritual master, when he comes in contact with the conditioned soul, he can ignite the spiritual potency that's already dormant within the spirit soul. That he can understand this clearly, that he's not this conditioned body, that he actually is spirit soul. These 28 elements that we are residing in is not our true identity. So all these truths are being revealed by these personalities, the Nabha Yogendras. Purport of what he told. What is the purport you should again tell clearly? and all Vaishnavs and Yasit and mothers, sisters and everyone, please accept my general pranam. So now, we hear so many kathas, nine rishis. This book, one one questions and answers. So they gave so many answers. There are now, Gurudev gave us. So anyone, <coughs> working in this world. What is we are doing? So everything called karma. By mind, by heart, by body. So we are working. But there is so many differences. Karma, agarma, and bikarma. There are karma is sakam karma and niskam karma. Akarma and bikarma. Prohibited karma. So we are killing cows, animals, violence mode. This is prohibited karma. This is called B karma. Or karma. Sometimes we have necessity this work, but that time we are not doing. This is called A karma. And Swakam and Nishkam, when we have desire, Material desire, selfish mood, selfish desire, and all it, we are working for ourselves. This is called Sakam Karma. When we have no any desire, only only helping, working, so this this is called Niskam Karma. One side gain, other side bhakti. When we are following bhakti, we have no any selfish desire, no any one mood. No anything else. Only serve him Sri Krishna. Serve him Guru Padma. No any desires. This mood, this is called Nishkam Karma Bhakti. Oh, this is called Nirguna Bhakti. Nirguna Bhakti. Nirguna. 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 More yeah. higher than Nishkam Karma. Uh, Nishkam Karma. So, other way, many persons, Gyan Yogis, they are following Gyan They have no anything else, no any desires, so left all things. Then they are following work, karma. This is called Niskam karma. So there are so many types of karma. Parucha vado ved vayam balanam anushasana. So ved sastra spoke, everyone must follow the karma. Without, everyone will be lazy. And sleeping, not working. So must follow the karma. But don't go any material sense in your mood. Everyone follow me, then life will be successful. So in this way, Ved Shastra spoke, and anyone doing work. But when they are offering whole work, whole energy, whole karma, then will be successful, then will be pure. Like ghee. We are eating so much ghee, 
that what happening after that so many problems come heart, first heart problem body problem health problem any kind problems come but if use medicines with medicines it can give them no any problems when we are working and for for ourselves that will be problem blindness so sri krishna told when we are working for ourselves for family life then blindness anything blindness come blinded in ignorance in falling in maya and when we are offering whole karma for vishnu for sri krishna then no any blindness no any one day then everything will be free other way so many person sense in here they are working they are working bad habit bad things sense enjoying mood they are laughing oh sadhus ka they have, they put white chandan in this is what so why he put and why he put this wood and wood and stick so why he put are you where from come ye sadhu they are not a great sadhu so they are so also false and cheater they are laughing joking and talking so many false they are saying oh sense enjoy is best life without sense enjoy how can live and how can he so they are saying so many thoughts and many things and give him place to any others oh we are great person we have so great knowledge but everyone so police persons they worship to devi goddess and they are killing cows animals violence mood in this way they are living but life after life they are going hell so they are way so best and see so they will some spoil this thing this is in a good good religion loke bevayami samadha seva nittai jantor na hitatra nodana vyavasthiti stesu vivah jagya suragrahe irasu nivrutti ne rishta many persons mostly people they are uncontrolled sensi uncontrolled mind they are going so many girls and so many ladies then best they give rules you must follow these rules you should to marry marry love you can follow one person and you can protect sir to him, uh, her whole life live to together don't divorce so in this way best they told you must live with one only one lady then your senses your heart mind everything will be controlled and very soon renunciation is coming why i am going in marriage life why i am falling in family life so this is blindness one day so everything problems had it then they want oh god give me shelter that time they are praying so in this way that's the god this thing so loke vyavaya vi samadha seva any what eating meat peas egg so many things and drink drinking wine then best day made rules if you want you want to eat peas make a meat then you can do fire sacrifice then offer one animals after then you can eat otherwise not before don't kill to animals and jat grahana bhasta bihita suraya pasur alohanam na hingsa in bhagavata prohibited don't be violent don't kill animals and any others so what can i do what is process jat grahana bhasta bihita suraya if one drinker so all i will drink it then how can let then they are told oh you can take their smell but don't don't drink wine <laughs> and other way vasur alohanam you can offer one animal to gods and demi goddess and demi god but don't kill don't kill to animals so this is the swadharma based religion 
but anyone they don't know always killing cows animals and and going hells this life so they are killing many many animals next life they become animals so other persons killing them in this way violence moods so killing each other fighting killing killing then going hells so this is the best religion external no. but not internal <laughs> so in this way this is they spoke so many kathai after them very good